All right, thank you so much for coming to my demo. Um, um, my name is Dahlia. I'm a product manager on the Visual Studio team specializing in developer productivity. And in today's session, uh, my main goal is to leave you with five tips that you can use outside of the session that will make you more productive in Visual Studio. So what are we looking at here? This is my sample app that I built for this demo. It's a rock, paper, scissors application. Very small, but you can imagine that it's your own application. Let's start with the first tip and the most fundamental tip, um, and it's learn your keyboard shortcuts. I know you probably know some, uh, but learn some more. Um, one of my favorite shortcuts to use to learn keyboard shortcuts and to just search for features in general is uh, Control Q. And a lot of times I use this keyboard shortcut to look for other shortcuts to use if I'm noticing that my hands are getting away from the keyboard and reaching for the mouse. So kind of pay attention to your coding and see, am I doing something over and over and using the mouse for it? If so, let me look up a keyboard shortcut to replace that movement. Because not only are you losing time, but you're also code switching. Um, so one of the um, shortcuts that I had the most difficulty learning is the comment out a line shortcut. I would always look it up, and I'd be like, I I'm really used to the control slash, but in Visual Studio, it's control K, control slash. So I would look it up. I can see it over here. OK, that's great. And I just kept looking it up over and over. My second tip with this tip is that you can actually customize your shortcut. So you don't have to fight against your muscle memory, you can customize your shortcut. So let's let's do that really quick. So the way that you do that is you go to your keyboard. Um, I swear I can type. <laughs> we can go to your keyboard uh, menu. It's under Options, Environment, Keyboard. Look up whatever shortcut you want to override. Find it. And you'll notice that the, the shortcut that is currently set on is Control-K, Control-Slash. So I'm going to override this shortcut. And you can do this with anything that you have. And what I want to use is Control-Slash. Assign it, click, click OK, and now I can just comment out with Control-Slash. So I really like to not fight my own muscle memory. And if you remember some of the shortcuts, you can use the customization option over here. The other thing that I want to point out is that if you want to ever use shortcuts from other programs, you can do that easily. If you go back to that same menu option that I showed, you can actually use shortcuts from another program. So I know a lot of people switch from VS Code to Visual Studio. If you want to use a shortcuts in VS, Co VS Code, you can select this option and use it right within Visual Studio. So I really like um, the flexibility that you have here. I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to exit out of here. Um, something that really helped me learn shortcuts in Visual Studio is the reference um, option here. I don't know if you're aware of it, but if you look up keyboard or you go to the help menu and then look up keyboard shortcut reference, you can go to our page that has all the keyboard shortcut in Visual Studio. What I ended up doing, because I'm kind of a little bit old school, is I ended up printing it off. And I would learn two shortcuts a week, and I would force myself to use the shortcut. And if I know it already, I scratch it off. I actually printed off some uh, keyboard shortcut printouts. If you uh, are interested, you can grab one at the end. But the idea is the more that you learn short keyboard shortcuts, the less you're going to be context switching. So again, keyboard shortcuts are going to be a really great productivity booster for you. All right, let's go back to our Visual Studio. So that's tip number one, keyboard shortcuts. Second tip is to learn how to navigate your code quickly in Visual Studio. The reason why this is really important is because a lot of the time, we're actually reading code instead of writing code. So it's important to learn how to navigate code, navigate your code really quickly. So let me show you uh, an example of this. I have my test here. Um, it's testing one of my methods. And right now, the test is actually failing. So if I exit out of um, uh, full screen mode, you see that my Method is expecting, uh, uh, it's taken in scissors, and it's expecting it to assign it to the right enumeration. But right now, it's failing. So traditionally, what people would do is to navigate to that method. Um, what I like to use is the Alt F12 uh, feature or the peak definition feature. And what's nice about this is that you can stay within your test. You don't have to navigate back and forth between your test class and your method class. 
You can navigate where you want and you can actually change the code right within that view. So in this case, I made the classic error of copying and pasting without replacing. Probably did that too many times. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to scissors. And you'll notice that my test goes from red to green. Um, and you might wonder, Dahlia, you didn't actually invoke any tests. What's going on here? Um, I recently found out about really, a really cool feature called live unit testing. Um, and it continuously runs the test in the background as I'm changing code. I didn't actually have to save this class. It just ran the test. It's really cool. Um, it's, it's available in the Enterprise Edition. So if you have the Enterprise, you can definitely check it out. Anyways, back to navigation. So you can change the code. And the, the shortcut here is Alt F12. So let's escape out of this mode. Um, so you can click the Escape key, and it escapes out of the mode. The other shortcut that I really love to use is the Control Shift Backspace. That shortcut is going to go to the last place you've edited code. So you notice that I changed the code in my method. And when I hit that shortcut, it went back to my method. Because a lot of times, yes, I'm kind of changing code. But you want to see the context of your code to make sure you didn't break anyone else. Um, so definitely check out that shortcut and try it out. The other one I really love to use is the Control minus shortcut. So going backwards and forwards. So Control minus, Control shift minus. So going backwards and forwards. Um, and I don't know if you're aware, but you can actually switch between tabs using the Control tab shortcut. So this is similar to if you're using Edge or any browser, you can switch between uh, classes right there. And I know there's a lot of shortcuts to remember here. One of my uh, favorite secret menus that I found out about is the Alt Backtick menu, which brings up a different menu that I've ever seen in my right click. Um, and it shows you all the navigation shortcuts along with the features that I talked about. So that's Alt Backtick. Um, so that's around navigation. The next tip that I want to share with you is around a feature that we added recently, and it's called Sticky Scroll. Has anyone heard of Sticky Scroll? All right, a few? No? OK. Let, let me enable it and show you what it looks like. So I'm going to look for Sticky. So again, Control Q, because that's my favorite shortcut. S sticky Scroll. It'll bring up my Options menu. This is under Text Editor General. And you'll notice the Sticky Scroll option here. And if you enable it, Here's what you're going to see. Now you see this top portion of um, your code context showing up at the very top so you can easily orient yourself. This feature is really helpful if you have long methods and long class names. Um, I heard recently that it's a code smell to have long methods and long class names. And I was thinking any code base I've worked on is pretty stinky, probably, because that's just common everywhere. Um, so th what I like about this feature is that when I was coding this up, I kind of forgot that I was in a while loop, and I didn't have an exit uh, condition, which is really bad. Um, so you know, because I was oriented really well, I could see the context I was in. I did add in the condition, and um, everything went well from there. So highly recommend checking out this feature. It's a, it was released in 17.7 uh, Preview 2, and it's available. Um, 17.5 preview 2. I said that wrong. But it's available in the latest, uh, latest versions. Another feature that I really like when you're editing code in Visual Studio um, is the uh, control dot shortcut. You probably are using it day to day. Anyone uses control dot? All day, every day? Yeah, awesome. So if you're editing code, definitely get in the habit of using the control dot shortcut. This is going to bring up any quick actions that Visual Studio thinks that you should do. So in this case, I, it's asking me, hey, do you want to switch your var to an explicit type? That's probably a good idea. So that's what I'm going to do here. When you're editing code, sometimes what you want to do is you want to maybe make an edit in multiple lines. And that's where multi-select can come into place. So for example, in my code, maybe I want the computer to be a little bit more excited about people winning or losing or the result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the message. And then whatever line I have here, I'm going to click Control-Alt. And I'm going to select all the other spots that I want to edit. 
and then I'm going to add whatever message I want. So if you have any time where you have multiple lines that you're trying to edit at the same time, this can really come in handy. You can click Escape and then get out of that mode. Oh, by the way, OK, so I, I heard about this shortcut, and I was really happy about Have you ever been in the situation where you're in the middle of a line, and you're about to start a new line, you click Enter, and you're like, oh, like that's not going to work? Well, actually, if you click Shift Enter, it'll start a new line, even if you're in the middle of a line. I know it's really small, but it blew my mind. So Shift Enter definitely is uh, a really great shortcut to have. Um, all right, so last uh, tip I want to leave you with is code cleanup. Uh, code cleanup is really helpful because a lot of times when I'm writing code, I don't care about the spaces. I'm like writing this logic and it looks like a mess and I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about the spaces. So what I do is I use the control K, control E shortcut and it, it cleans up my code. Now, even better for me in my personal Visual Studio, I actually enable it by default so that every time I save, it cleans up my code automatically. The way that you want to do that is that you can do clean up, save, and go to the uh, clean, code cleanup uh, option here. You can select it, click OK, and if I go back and I mess up my uh, formatting again, once I save, it automatically um, formats the code for me. I don't think I should be spending any time manually formatting my code, so it's really helpful to have these kinds of features. And I know people go back and forth about the formatting rules of their repos. You can actually specify that in your editor config file, and then you can not be wasting any time formatting your code manually. And I love, I love that feature. Awesome. So uh, I know I have a little bit of time left, so what I'm going to leave you with is if um, this was a bit much for you, and you want to go back to uh, figure out what, uh, what shortcuts you want to use, I actually um, put this repo online. So you can access it using aka.ms slash tips demo. And I put down all the shortcuts that I have. I, I'll put it up here. Sorry about that. Um, aka.ms slash tips demo. If you want to uh, check out the code and maybe play with it, practice some of those shortcuts, definitely check that out. I've also included a link to the shortcut cheat sheet if you want to check that out as well. Um, I have the handouts here if you want to grab it after my demo. And um, I, that's mainly the shortcuts that I wanted to show, but there's a lot more advanced features that Mads, Jesse, and Dante are going to be talking about tomorrow at 5.15, so definitely check out that session. Um, and thank you for coming to the demo.